tourism. Let's get to it. Welcome guys, I'm Truthman from Overclocking TV. This is Xiala and on the show we have Josh as well. And today is the OMG show and we are actually episode 7. Episode 7 and OMG is an overclock mod game. So this is the show where we are talking about overclocking, PC modding and uh, gaming in general. So PC and console and everything. And um, yeah, today, 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 tonight, to this evening, wherever you are, <laughs> um, <laughs> this night or whatever, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be an intense show um, because uh, some big questions are going uh, to uh, to come, uh, especially with this week's uh, main announcements from GDC, which uh, is uh, Google Stadia, so which is the main topic of this show. And uh, Josh, that's here with us, uh, probably is going to have some uh, very opinionated opinion about it. Um, being a case model in p building PCs, basically, um, yeah, we're, 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 I'm looking forward to hear about uh, his views on that. So let's start. Uh, sure, let's start. Uh, Google Stadia. So basically, Google announced their cloud-based gaming services that we don't really know a lot more except that it might be very interesting but a lot of questions that uh, remain to be asked. Um, yeah. So it's a cloud-based gaming solution. It's going, to, it's going to be hosted on Google Backbone so all the data centers across the world uh, will be hosting their uh, game system. Basically, you can play a game uh, within a browser, uh, within a, a, through a Chromecast, through a tablet, through your cell phones, all that with the same expected quality or expected performances. That means it's actually not running on your devices. It's actually running in the cloud and then pushing that to you. So you tell me, ah, yeah, that already exists and there's so, so many things that does that. Usually when yes. you do that, you need to have a physical device at your place to actually uh, do the decrypting and so on. Um, Google is taking another approach. No device, no it's box, software, nothing. Basically. It's all uh, yeah, it's all beaming and streaming your, your game. Uh, the early test was done last year with uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey when they streamed part of the of the gameplay uh, to a few different users. Uh, I guess it was like a, a live testing for the scaling system yeah. and the latency. And uh, that was one thing. The second thing that uh, came to mind after the press conference earlier this year, this uh, this week at GDC, was yeah, they have a new controller as well. So that controller will be connected through Wi-Fi. I guess that's uh, basically your controller is connected to the Google services directly through yeah. Wi-Fi and so on. And you can switch your your game in, in across the different devices. And I was actually that was the thing that impressed that me the most yeah. during the, the during the keynote. It's like the, the person doing the demo had one controller in hand. And then playing on I think that was just he, a, he was going a from tablet. a PC to a tablet to a TV to a phone and... then to the TV at the end on the Chromecast and that was the same game just going through it was basically again. like oh I know I'm gonna play here and just playing with it, it was like oh my god like okay that's interesting yeah. um, so far uh, so that's for the uh, cloud service part and they will be announcing as well that uh, they announced as well that Stadia is actually becoming a game studio. So in the likes of Ubisoft, EA, and so on. So they're going to have other brands game and also have their own, basically. Yes. So basically like Valve. I mean, Valve and Steam, that's the same yes. thing. You play for they, Ubisoft. They, it's, yeah, it's the same thing, but they don't call it the same, really. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's, it, they, they did it the other way around, though. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they got the platform, and then they are doing the studio. Um, so if we have to sum up, in, in without getting too much into the drama and the, and the discussion that's going on, what we know that's going to launch in 2019, uh, they claim you can play seamlessly across your devices, which is what we saw during the keynote. If uh, it's real, then it's working. And even though it's not out yet, it seems to be working correctly so far. So that's that's pretty good. Uh, I guess they use the same technology they use for the Chromecast and so mm. on. And you can use existing gamepad game controllers or use the the new google one obviously if you use an actual one that is connected through bluetooth to your pc you're going to be locked to your yeah. pc or your tablet or anything so that's uh part of the seamlessly ex well, they, they seamless did, experience yeah, they did mention it would go far yeah. better or it would work better with the google they just one say you can use existing yeah. gamepad or just get ours so that's yeah. one thing uh what we know as well yes 
Oh, do we know? Are you able to use a keyboard and mouse for that? If you're set up to a they computer, haven't, they haven't said. They didn't mention that. They didn't they mention you use other controllers, uh, USB ones or whatever. But they didn't really got too much in the detail. And actually, they didn't show it's actually working with another thing. So I'll be really curious to see if that's mm -hmm. something they they end this, up. This is actually part of the things that we or... don't know. <laughs> well, especially, uh, your, your comment is right, actually, because. Uh, I mean, if you're doing FPS games and you used to play on a keyboard and you invested, I don't know, mechanical keyboards and things, then you'd hope it would work with it. Otherwise, Google was just taking a console approach where people just play with gamepads, which is not the case for actually, what, 90% of the PC games? Like, people play with keyboards, I believe. Uh, I play with well, keyboards. We started playing Worms uh, WMD with the gamepad. And? It's actually easier. Is it? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. It's actually okay. easier. So, and I'm a big fan of keyboard and mouse. Like, yeah. uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, other things that we know: major studios are working on game titles. We know that Ubisoft has been part of the project for a long time. We yeah. know that they did the testing with Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which was the latest Assassin's Creed, and. Oh, by the way, I think that was Assassin's Creed was developed here in Montreal as well by Ubisoft. Because Ubisoft is pretty good here. Yes. You will see why. You will see why this is important. You will see why I think this is important. So, this uh, is Canada so. talking here. You need yeah. Um, yeah. And so we are sure that Ubisoft already presented Assassin's Creed. So we can expect that to be actually one of the game at launch of the platform. Mm -hmm. uh, we do expect there is more game in the making. I mean, if you are... Uh, tier one partner studio to do stuff you won't be doing just one game that is actually available somewhere else we could expect to have exclusive games being released on that specific platform um, and we have id software that will do doom eternal and we expect more uh, things and actually the, the 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 things that will i will remember from that keynote is that you don't say id software you say id Really? Yeah, yeah. The the the, the ID guy was saying it, and to me it was like it was always ID software, like ID something. Right. I was like it, and I was like literally like typing with a friend, like did you say it? Like ah, okay, whatever. Okay, maybe it's not to confuse it with ID, like uh, identification. Oh, yes. maybe, maybe it's a, it's a good PR move. Um, so Stadia will be developing and releasing their own game, so that we know it, and that's gonna be Jed Raymond. That would be driving that studio. She's actually she was named VP of the game division. I can't remember the exact name at Google. And why I was saying that it was important that it was actually from Montreal. Jade Raymond is actually from Montreal. She had a long and long, long experience at Ubisoft and EA. She has been uh, she's very well known in the industry for previous achievements. And uh, I, I okay, we have no idea whatsoever what's going to happen. But so far. They announced they will be doing games, but they announced nowhere what they will have an office or a game studio. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to take a bet with you. They will have it here. We Montreal? will have one in Montreal for sure. Let's see, we'll see. Yeah. By the end of 2019, we will have a studio in Montreal, and I do expect that we'll have one in Europe and one in Asia, so they can do the localization of the languages and so on. Uh, this is just wild guess. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, the, don't don't quote me on that or anything. It's just I do think that it's that is how it's going to happen. And especially in Montreal, uh, for those that don't know, uh, the gaming industry is pretty vibrant. Uh, we have um, EA, Ubisoft, uh, Warner Bros, a ton and a ton of indie developer games, uh, game studio that are actually based in Montreal. Uh, it's insane. Like every week you can go out in, uh, in the city and there's some meetups about like, hey, this is the uh, indie for platforms and indie for that stuff, of uh, that kind of games. Like, uh, there's so many games you can try. So, uh, that was it. Other things that we know. The graphic solution is provided by AMD. It's a custom-made AMD graphic technology. Uh, basically, we would expect that to be a, some kind of Radeon uh, technology in there. And they said it's a special one, but it's probably... They say it's custom-made, yeah. so we do expect that it's actually just to, uh, to strip down the unnecessary thing and just focus more on the uh, exact same thing. In terms of performances, they claim that's going to be as power like each instances uh, of the games that you will play will be actually as powerful as Xbox and PS4 put together. Um, that's once again wait and see for the benchmark. Mm -hmm. And the CPU used uh, have not been disclosed. They announced that they have cache. They announced that they have uh, a different things for that frequency and so on. But they never name anyone for the for the CPU. I think, and I think they might even never mention anyone. You know, they're probably just focusing on. Hey, this is a service. This is what we can do with it, and the story around it. 
and they're probably going to try to do what Apple was doing with the hardware, basically remove specs and remove the hardware out of completely out of the experience and the discussion. Because in the end, people will be interested in playing the games, making sure it plays well, and no one, well, they will try that no one really argues about the hardware because otherwise they have to upgrade data centers. It's going to be a difficult conversation for them because it's not like you're upgrading your PC because there's a new GPU coming out, right? So, and and this, that's the thing as well that will evolve over time, mm -hmm. and if they want to to change the data centers, that's their problem. That's not yours anymore. So that's actually one part of the uh, of the things in there. Uh, speaking of benchmark. Uh, I was about to say future market. It's not future market anymore. UL UL benchmark uh, add some part of the uh, of the keynotes where they say, hey, this is how the benchmark would look like on a regular PC. This is how the benchmark looks on Stadia. Uh, sure, there was differences. Uh, you could see stuff uh, there that looks good, but once again, there was visual benchmark. We don't add any. No we didn't add any numbers except from the claims. I hope we will be able to do the, a real uh, testing for that. I so that's from what we know. This is well, and I'll be curious to see, like for the benchmarking stuff, I'll be curious to see what it benchmarks when you have a server of 64 people playing a game. You know, you can uh, any system will run really well with only a single user on there. But yeah. you know, once you start throwing a bunch of people on there, things can change. A lot, and I'll be very curious to see how like the lag and ping and all that kind of stuff plays out once you start loading servers up with people. And there's one thing as well that they say it's supposed to be one instances per person that is playing, which I don't oh, know wow. how they're gonna do that. And I guess that's not gonna be physical instances, but that's gonna no, be a resource it's a, it's a resource thing, box yeah. instances. So you have a uh, you have your reserve performance uh, box basically they can play in that. And depending on the game you play, you can actually just scale that up and down, and then you just load up data centers and just virtualize everything and just uh, containerize if you, if you yeah. per se. The, they they uh, did the also mention about the graphics card that they could like couple them. Like, uh, if, I mean, if you technically assume an instance has a, say, access to one GPU, that they could put them together, uh, like combine multiple GPUs at once for one instance. Uh, I guess that's how they are going to plan to scale it up for future games if they need more performance without having to replace all the data center every time. Um, but yeah, we, we really don't know how it's going to be behind the scene, but it, it should be quite interesting to take a tour of that data center. <laughs> well, there, yeah. might, there might be racks and racks and racks of servers. Of GPUs. Of <laughs> yeah. It's like a mining factory, actually. Oh, maybe maybe actually Google realized, ah, actually, that Bitcoin thing, uh, let's, uh, let's just do something else with it. <laughs> that might be one we need. Uh, so that's for the things we know, for the things we don't know. Price. We don't know the price. We don't know the requirements. Uh, of your internet connection, and this is a big, big, big challenge. Which there's a mention 25 megabits. Yeah, I so mentioned to the press that we need at least uh, down 25. Yeah, so, and it was saying like yep. they recommend a, a 50 megabit connection, um, and then if you're 25 or under, it'll be streaming at 7p oh, yeah. resolution. This is yeah, off of so, Gizmodo. Um, that, that's that's, that's, gonna 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 go. that's gonna be the hardest part. That's gonna be the hardest part. Uh, latency in the game, same thing, rumors point to 100 milliseconds latency, which is maybe why there is no keyboard and mouse demonstration and just gamepad. Because if you play on a gamepad, there is actually already a lag and most of the time you don't notice it because of the way you get used to do that. Yeah. That being said, that being said, this is a wild guess. Uh, the rumors point to 100 milliseconds. Once again, we don't have access to the platform, so we can't test. And as we say for the well, hardware, wait for benchmark or wait for release. You, you won't be technically, you won't be able anyway to go lower than the latency of the internet to their servers. I mean, as fast as it might go. And already, if you're doing a ping from you to Google, in most cases, what like 20 milliseconds, somewhere between 10 and 20, depending where you live. And for a round trip, it might be actually more than 20. Than 10, um, so 15, 15. six, one yeah. way, right? Or is uh, that the wrong trip? That's, that's the wrong trip. That's so that's from me there. asking and, and then back. With just the ping with no data in there. Yeah, no data in there, uh, average is 11 milliseconds, which is not bad. Not bad, but once you pack all the video feeds in 4K, so... I mean, if you can do 10 that. milliseconds for a cloud service, that's going to be insane. I mean, they announced they, they will be able to do 4K 60 by the end of the year. 
and they plan to do 8K and 120 FPS mm -hmm. for that, which is something that even most of the people won't be able to use because they don't have the screen, but that's a different story. Yeah, and yeah. it's no point to do 60 hertz <laughs> if you can't send data at 60 hertz back and forth anyway. So, <laughs> so the two major things that we that I personally see coming up are the access for high speed internet. Uh, this is a big issue. I mean, we live in a, in the con in countries that are well, I'm gonna say that equipped for high speeds. Uh, let's not talk about the price that we have in Canada because it's completely it's uh, well equipped, but it's uh, definitely pricey. Yeah, it's it's. Well, uh, Europe is very uh, well placed on, uh, on on that map. Mm -hmm. If you're a European person, and that's where that's gonna launch first, Europe, UK, US, and I think that's it. Yeah. I think there was like three or four, and uh, and maybe Korea, maybe they will. They be. they need to do it where they have those edge nodes already in place, like those um, very close to the people, sort of like processing servers. So, uh, it limits a bit the the sort of like the the regions where it's gonna be available at the start, but. Once again, wait and see. So, quick uh, like round around the table. Uh, Tim, what do you think about that specific new take on the cloud, uh, cloud game system? So, no, it's, it's funny, right? Because uh, if you guys were on the show last week, you remember the discussion we had once we had stopped the show and we're still live and we're talking about Steam. Because you were talking about your, uh, not Steam OS, but the Steam Link. Yeah, the Steam is, Link that you can put on the which Raspberry is basically. Pi. Uh, software you have to install on an extra device that you plug onto your TV or it could be an actual PC or whatever. But basically the, the discussion was revolving around how stupid I was thinking that you were basically streaming your game from your local PC to your screen if you could already basically start doing that from the event internet straight. And one week later, yeah. what happened? <laughs> uh, Stadia announced at GDC, and everyone, uh, including you and uh, Jens that was on the show, were like, "Ah, oh, but come on, it's uh, it's it's much faster in local. It's like there's too much latency." If you play on. locally, yes. If you play through the internet, obviously yeah. you have one more hop. Yeah, and there's that. But basically, also the point of the discussion was. Um, I'm tired of having to install 40 gigabytes games, right? I think everybody, no one wants to do that. And it's, uh, it goes, it comes in the way of playing a game. And here I'm talking even about an experience recently at a, like a, like a, uh, like a, one of like those esports bars where you can play games and things like that. So you go there, you rent a machine, you get on the machine and the day, the games, need to also download updates and you're like, okay, so I'm paying for by the hour for this. And then what? I should watch a progress bar or something? Uh, so I think all this... You don't is like to pay to watch progress problems. bars? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, yeah. I think that if, if, I, was paid, that. Yeah, if I was paid <laughs> to, to look it? at progress bar, I don't think I would like, even accept that. Yeah. Well, so basically, um, that's my take on it. I think it's cool. It's awesome. It's going to be really great to, um, to play quickly games. I love the part where they have all this sharing um, built into the system where you can basically quickly on the YouTube video, link your viewers straight to like a special moment where you were playing that bus and they can actually switch to that moment and try to play it also themselves uh, without having to play the whole game behind it or before that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's really cool. Uh, you can share that also like on Facebook and other places and people saying they can jump into there, they can... Eventually... Well, they say YouTube and social media. They, they, they pointed out. They Facebook pointed to Facebook as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they pointed it all out. So it's... Uh, that's, I think, one of the coolest things, and it's something where we will see that maybe companies like Twitch, uh, where we're streaming right now for streaming, may also start to be wary because they have been pushing extensions and interactions, but what they were missing all along was the interaction in the game uh, with the streamer, and that's something I think Stadia will bring to the table. Okay, that's your opinion. Mm -hmm. Josh, what's your opinion about uh, Google Stadia? <laughs> No, I think it's really cool. Um, you know, it, it's in the world of where we're going now of everything being online and how plugged in everything is. Um, I think this is the the logical next move for it. You know, I don't think it's ever going to replace the people who love building their own PCs and love, you know, the upgrade process and all that kind of stuff. I think there's still going to be a, a healthy bunch of people who want to do that. But, um, you know, for these newer gamers who are coming up who you know either a don't have the money to put together their own custom rig or 
or maybe even just the time to do it or, you know, whatnot. They just want something very quick and simple. And, you know, I turn on the controller, hit a couple buttons and I'm jumped in a game. You know, I think it's an awesome deal. Um, and for people who travel a lot, you know, for me, I travel a ton for work and, you know, it'd be kind of cool to be able to just pack a controller away with me, show up to a, a hotel room and then, you know, whip out the laptop and be playing same game, pick up where I left off is, you know, I was playing at my house or something, or depending on how it's implemented, you can, you know, if you can stream it into the, your hotel room or something, I think that's a pretty cool deal also. Um, you know, it, it, I'm very curious to see how it all plays out in the end with, uh, in terms of any lag or noticeable lag and how the stream service actually ends up working out. But I think, you know, with, the technology that there is for all of it already. I, I don't see or think, you know, they'll have that many issues. Obviously there'll be some growing pains at the very beginning, but what company doesn't have that kind of stuff or what new technology doesn't have that kind of stuff. So I think well, through all of that, I think it'll be a very cool system. Yeah. I'm excited to see it. I, I agree we'll with, um, with what you say actually about, um, so it's a good transition to after as well, but that part where it's not gonna displace people that were maybe building PCs. Uh, the same is kind of like uh, the equivalent of cloud computing and people that are actually building servers. You have obviously less people building servers, but you have still people building servers that are sort of packaged as a cloud thing or like a, like sort of like a open stack thing or whatever virtual servers and virtual machines. So people will still build machines at home probably as well. Um, but yeah, the, it will serve a, a part of the market that uh, might have been left out of gaming actually for some reason, for money yeah. reasons or other reasons. Yeah, the only thing I, I would have to disagree with you guys, and sorry for that, is the uh, the sharing and live feature will only be about the game. And the only reason why I will watch someone playing is not just to play the game, it's to actually watch their reaction. Oh, so the picture the in picture and all so, those yeah. So yeah. I don't like the, the old like alerts and things because sometimes it's, too, it's taking too much space in terms of uh, of creativity and, and things. And this is actually one of the main reasons why we don't use it that much uh, on our channel. And so I would watch a gameplay for, hey, I'm stuck there. What should I do? And then that's where I will watch the gameplay only. But otherwise, I won't be watching the gameplay per se. Uh, I mean, if you don't see the person or the person how she, the person react, he or she reacts, uh, how you 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 can make fun and things. I mean, it's more about the people than just the game. And yeah. and the game might be awesome, good looking, mm -hmm. and then. What about the commentary? Do you have commentary? I mean, you have a microphone in the controller, so I guess you could be speaking on yeah. top of it but i don't know so that's all the things we don't yes, know yet yes. and so yeah it will be that's going to be interesting it uh, might be actually a new uh, a new generation of streamers actually that will be doing a different kind of streams than the way twitch has been promoting it basically because it's true uh twitch streams are very grassroots it's going to you build your own stream interface and you, you know you combine your chat your game your picture in picture camera um all this but maybe this model is going to go away maybe it's going to be a separate model from the one that google is going to promote with oh. just the games or maybe um, we'll be able to access that feed from the if. from the youtube and then if you have a cloud-based system like the guys at the mm -hmm. is it called yeah it's called Lightstream. yeah is it called Lightstream? Uh, well, you have um yes it's called yes. Lightstream. and so then it's all cloud-based and then you can do all that again then problem solved and then here we go <laughs> yeah we'll all boil down to latency yeah. and how everything syncs up together or something like that but um yeah it's gonna be interesting for this perfect well actually we've been uh, extending quite a lot on that on that subject i did not i did not expect that to last that long but <laughs> we'll for sure talk again about that yeah. uh, you have to remind you and i want to ask you on the live on the chat or you can just uh, post that in the comment if you're watching the replay do you think this is the end of pc and console and diy i Let us know. don't think so uh but it will definitely eat up a bit of uh, of it like the tablets did for the low hand uh like tablets even eat out of um the laptop segment and just like smartphone completely ate out of PC to begin with. I mean, like if you look at the time you spend on the screen, like you, I used to maybe spend like really a lot of hours on my PC to play games and other things. And once a smartphone came along, then I started spending more time on my phone. So this is just, uh, it's going to be happening this way. We'll see. We'll see. 
other news for this week, and then we're gonna move on to discuss a little bit more with you, Josh. Uh, our OCP founder Kyle Bennett is moving to Intel, which is quite a big news. So that was announced earlier this week into a blog post on our OCP that was actually on Tuesday this week. Uh, so that's quite a move. Uh, we already had uh, Ryan uh, from PC Perspective that actually moved to Intel as well. Um, last year, yeah. Last year. Uh, is These are two of and other good chunk of ex tech press related uh, people and folks that are actually now uh, working at uh, at Intel, and the thing is they're all moving in the same team, or pretty much the same kind of uh, concept, which is uh, all in the into the um, uh, how did they name that? Graphics. The enthusiast engagement, yeah, enthusiast oh. engagement team and the, the leadership marketing group. So they are all related to. Uh, as it looks like, I mean, from from what information that we have publicly, is that it's all related to the the move few months, actually a year ago, from Raja from AMD to Intel. So that's quite interesting to see. Uh, officially, our OCP will run up until April first, and this is not a joke. And <laughs> after that, <laughs> Kyle will become the director of enthusiast engagement at Intel uh, for Intel's technology leadership marketing group. So that's. So basically, there's no one left running hard OCP, and it's gonna close. Oh, well, that was not a one-man team, uh, but he didn't want it to. So that's what he's explaining in his blog post. Um, he didn't want it to actually sell hard OCP, and he wanted to to keep it like I don't want to shut it down, but I don't want to have this conflict of interest and so on. So basically, what will happen to hard OCP is it will be mothballed. Uh, that means it will no longer publish news, no longer publish reviews, no editorials, or anything. So basically, it will stay online, but just die. And that's it. Just, just as this. So artocp.com will say it like this. Uh, good, it's not putting offline. I mean, that's that's one of the things. I mean, the the hard work of people that uh, that. Right. Let's get the content is today, mm -hmm. yes. And the uh, forums part, so artforum.com will be sold to a company. We haven't disclosed which one and how that's going to be, but uh, the forums will be demonetized and uh, advertisement removed, and it will be sustained only by the community itself through Patreon. So that's going to be a, a different kind of uh, business model or revenue model, if I would say. For the forum? For the forum, as the main reason because... Child will still be an admin there. Well, if so, the forum is sold to a company, why would they need Patreon? He's selling the domain name. Oh, yeah, so the forum is going to change the name? I have no idea. Okay, interesting. Because uh, the way it's written is hardforum.com will be sold and then artforum will be demonetized. So I don't know if it's two separate entity or not. Um, yeah. What is what? Why I think that was important is first, there's quite a lot of ex tech tech people. Uh, from the press are actually moving to Intel. So that's going to be interesting to see how that's actually impacting in the next uh, coming month or years. I mean, usually when you get to a new company, it's like a like few months before actually you can make uh, a difference and change, especially on a company like Intel. Or, I mean, that's actually the same thing with any big companies. Um, you need to have some traction to make things change. Uh, what I wanted to point out was how he opened up on this blog post. And I can read that for you. Uh, he's saying that I will just on April 1st, blah, 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 stop that. And says, Intel wants to reconnect with the top of the I performance consumer pyramid, which contains hardware enthusiasts, overclockers, gamers, and content creators. And just that part means that we have a statement from someone that will be working at one of the manufacturers that says, this is one of the interests. This is one of the targets that are actually being uh, developed right now uh, in there. So, uh, basically, wait and see. It's um, good. At least uh, it's aiming in a direction where overclockers, PC motors, and uh, high-level enthusiasts are not being forgotten. And uh, I think that's uh, basically what a good takeaway for And it's even more important this week with the announcement of Stadia. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it might not even be related. No, I don't think that's they should, related at all. They should hire you. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe there's a commission somewhere. Just... Uh, there you go. Yeah. You're getting screwed somewhere for sure. Damn it. <laughs> I've been, I've been unmasked. Um, so basically, the future is bright, or actually, the future is blue. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
All right. So moving on to the final topic of the day. And, I mean, the um, main topic of today. The main, the, the main and final topic of the day. Josh, uh, welcome on the show again. Uh, for the people who don't know you, before we start with the questions and t- start talking about your mod, um, would you mind introducing yourself, who you are, where you come from, what sort of walk of life you, you come from, and how you got into PC modding? Yeah, um, so yeah, I'm Josh Lambeth. Um, I live in Phoenix currently, uh, originally from Washington State, and um, my main job of profession, I, I own a video production company. Um, we do specialty camera movement stuff, drones. Uh, we're actually the first drone company in Arizona, one of the first five or six in, in the U.S. Um, about seven years ago, and we've expanded that out to a bunch of other stuff now. But uh, yeah, where it comes to the PC stuff, uh, I started in computers back when I was little. I mean, my dad was always using computers for his work and everything, so I was always around them. Uh, I started, my very first computer was, that I was given to me, um, it's like a Pentium 486 or something along that line. Don't remember specifics on it, it was a while back, but uh, then all through high school, you know, was always building computers to play video games with my other friends and stuff, and we would move on, upgrade different parts, and then save the parts that we upgraded so we could build another computer. And then, you know, by our senior year, I think, between my brother and I, we had close to six or seven computers at our house, um, (laughs) all capable of playing, you know, Battlefield, Battlefield Vietnam. Um, And it was cool because, you know, we could bring over our friends from school who didn't have a computer and we had a a nice little LAN set up and we could just play games all weekend. Uh, And then we'd go over to another friend's house who had kind of done the same thing. And uh, he had a much faster internet connection than I did. So, you know, we'd be able to play some online stuff with all of us. It was a lot of fun from that. Um, And then, yeah, after I graduated high school, uh, I started working as a video editor and jumped to Apple systems, uh, bought a Mac laptop, um, was using Apple up until about four years ago, and then started building or built another PC again. Um, first one was a PC slash Hackintosh. So it ran both, um, had the Hackintosh side for my video editing software and then PC side for playing some games. And then three years ago, I built uh, my first full blown PC and it was my first hardline build that I had ever done. And um, by doing that, it kind of gave me the uh, start building computers again. And, you know, so from doing all through high school, I really enjoyed it. And it was cool to jump back into it again. Uh, and then jump forward to beginning of last year, uh, we, my wife and I, we bought a house, had it built, and I had a home office set up. And I just wanted something, you know, different and unique for my home office, you know, something that stood out just because and started drawing some ideas out on a napkin and um, random sheets of paper over the course of a few months and um, everything I, I always knew I wanted to do some type of a desk build but every desk build I had been finding online was you know your standard square box looking desk with a piece of glass over the top of it and the computer you know the components seen underneath it and I was like, okay, that's still unique, but it's still, there's a bunch of other people with that. So what can I do a little bit differently? And that's kind of how I came up with my current desk system. Um, It took me six months to build and many countless sleepless nights over at a buddy's shop. I have a really good friend, uh, David Hughes, Hughes Manufacturing. He lives 10 minutes from where I live. And he literally let me take over half of his shop for almost four months while we, uh, he was teaching me how to do everything. You know, I had never welded before. I had never sweated copper pipe before. And he he taught me that process. And then, you know, as we'd come up with different things or try different things, um, you know, I bounce ideas off of him. Okay. Like we, this looks cool and this is working, but what can we do a little bit differently to, to make it level? And, um, I think we succeeded in creating something that is a little bit on the next level side. Well, at least it is on the weight side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So actually, so you say, so um, we with your, uh, with your friend, right? You, you build the whole system um, to go back basically for the, the, um, on the, on the build up process itself. So you use steel, you welded stuff, 
Um, I mean, this thing must be like heavy as f. Uh, how how much is. does it actually weigh? So I don't have an official official weight, but we're guessing it's somewhere between six hundred and six hundred and fifty pounds. Um, we is do know that. Is there a moment you stop counting, or you just never tracked it? But uh, it was hard to determine once we started adding all the copper piping uh, and you know the computer components and stuff. It started getting hard to weigh all of that. Um, I do know that the the steel frame itself, just by itself, nothing else added, is about 425 pounds. Um, we know that because they actually print on the side of the steel I beam, you know, how much it weighs per foot. So it's 18 pounds per foot. Um, it's an eight inch steel I beam, eight inch wide steel I beam. And then, so we're roughing about 425 pounds for the frame. Uh, the wood top is between a probably another to 100 pounds. Um, I didn't officially weigh it, but it's a African zebra wood, so it's an incredibly dense, very heavy wood, um, two inches thick, and yeah, it's just heavy. I mean, we are moving it. I think you guys have some pictures I sent over yeah. of of us and some, you know, we, to move it around the shop. We were using a forklift, um, you know, so it's. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not sure how many other PC builders can say they had to use move their chassis around with a forklift, but um, so, oh, and we, we actually- That was in the shop. So how did you put it actually in your home? How did it enter the door? Yeah, so that's a, <laughs> that's actually one of the biggest questions I was getting asked during the build process was, you know, how, <laughs> how, how are we gonna get it through a door? And I measured my door probably 15, 20 times. <laughs> um, sure. You can see it, you, know, you can kind of see it off in the corner there. <laughs> and we built the desk to be half an inch smaller than the width of the door and so we knew it would fit but it was going to be a tough you know fit so it took four of us to get it through the house and unfortunately we did ding the door up a little bit so i have you know had to fix that but um you know once it got through the door it's it's was in the very first room so once it made it through the door it only had to move you know another five or six feet to its final position um so yeah it was uh it was a challenge for sure. It's insane, but man. It's well insane. worth it. <laughs> yeah. So, actually, I do have a question. How long does that took you in the whole process? Like from from the first drawing all the way up to you can boot it up at your place and place something on it. Um. So for I guess from first drawing, probably like nine months, ten months. Um. I started. I probably did about two three months of just sketching stuff out randomly whenever like i tra said earlier i travel a lot for work as i would be traveling i'd just be sitting there on the plane like thinking okay what you know what could i do differently about this and um just start sketching random stuff unfortunately i never took any pictures of the sketches but um well, we, then, we do believe you did sketch something out. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, there's. Uh, yeah, I, I'm watching. I know this is a little bit of a delay, but I'm, I'm watching all the pictures yeah. on the stream. You know, there was one sketch of the, the cooling, loop mm -hmm. or one one of it. You know, that was another fun challenge because it's two individual loops, and figuring out how to move it all from one side to the other, and then the correct, you know, how to set it up with the pumps to have the correct head pressure and stuff to make it through the radiators and through the components correctly. Um, you know that was a fun challenge as well. So actually, that that loop is pretty long, right? How how many liters it did is. you did you measure? How much liquid you have to put in there to actually fill it up? Yeah, so it's just under ten liters total uh, between both loops. Um, the amount of the actual distance is eighty seven feet of distance, uh, both loops combined. Um, so you know forty three and a half ish feet per loop. Um, and initially, I was just going to be doing a single pump per loop. But after you know a bunch of research and talking to a bunch of people, including EKWB, uh, who um, you know, I bought the pumps from, they they said, yeah, well, a single D5 should be okay with it. But um, <laughs> you know, we'd we'd recommend you you run a second pump per loop. So each pump pushes is right before the component or right before the the radiator so i'll pass through those and then it can you know lose a little bit of the head pressure as it gets back and then it dumps it into the reservoir that sits right above the next pump and then it hits that next pump and then goes back through the system again yeah so it sort of like removes the the stress from the the pumps right correct yep oh, very good so actually so you're using uh, copper tubes what about corrosion 
<laughs> I cannot tell you how many times I've been asked about that because everybody's <laughs> like, hey, have you seen the, the Linus Tech Tips video where they did the whole oh, room yeah, water cooling and, you know, how big it or yeah. how badly that failed. Um, so I did it. That was another thing I did a ton of research on before committing to, you know, how can we make this work correctly? And the biggest thing is making sure on the inside, all the components are compatible with copper. So my radiators and the um, the water blocks are all either copper or nickel plated copper, which is okay. So internally, there should be no corrosion ever. Um, and then externally, you know, as you guys know, <laughs> copper over time will start changing color and mm -hmm. you know going green or black. Yeah, especially so, if you touch it with your hand or your like hand grease and things. Yep. Yep, exactly. So what we did was uh, after we had sweated all the pipes together, we actually clear coated all of it. Um, probably, I think we did seven to 10 layers of clear coat on it. I don't remember for sure. So should, in it theory, should keep it you know, the same yeah. color um, or at least greatly reduce the amount of discoloration that it'll have, you know, over time. And, and it's been, been running for nine months. It's probably been... Um, They've been clear coated for 10 months, I think, mm -hmm. and everything looks real good still. Um, you know, there really isn't anything noticeable with it yet, yeah. which is well, good. You have a transparent reservoir, so we'll quickly see if there's corrosion inside, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and, you know, I've been running the same coolant since I put it in, and it, it I haven't even replaced it yet with over nine months, and it's still going strong. Uh, no color you know, discoloration whatsoever. Yeah. Well, it's and good to use thing. a transparent one, so like that you will notice it quick. Because uh, some people, that's what happened, right? They use a uh, colored coolant. So if yeah, something starts to change, they will not notice it right away because it's it's mixed in, yep. the, in the color. Yep. And another thing that we did too differently um, than, you know, what was shown in the Linus was when we actually went through the sweating process uh, to, to put the pipes together, um, we had done a bunch of test runs with it and we were noticing really bad oxidization building up inside the pipes and it was breaking off in these little tiny black flakes and i was like well that mm -hmm. obviously is not going to be a good thing to have running through your loop into your radiators and pumps and stuff and i figured that would be you know a good thing to cause corrosion so we purchased a bottle of nitrogen and then hooked up a, a tube so every sweat joint that we did we are running pure nitrogen through the pipes and it was literally just coming out perfectly clean yes. uh there was no discoloration whatsoever inside and then i just had to worry about cleaning off any of the um the flux that was inside there after we were done so that helped a ton as well nice yeah that's a pretty uh pretty good things and uh, yes uh, actually you you actually fast fast tracked one of my questions about the the welding side because that's the first time you were doing welding work correct Yes, I had never sweated copper pipes together. Um, I had done, you know, messed around with a couple little welds here and there on different things, you know, over at his shop a few months beforehand, but I'd never actually welded anything of substance, you know, in terms of something this size anyway. So it was definitely a learning experience and um, lots of mistakes. And I've uh, talked to a couple other people who you know, are really good welders. And they're like, yeah, you either become a really good welder or really good with an angle grinder. And I've, <laughs> so I think I think my skills of it with an angle grinder may be a little bit better than my welding skills currently, but... Uh, it's quite an art form, actually. Yeah, to do it really is. Uh, it, you know, doing both of those, it brings a new appreciation, especially on the, um, like the plumbing side, like guys mm -hmm. who have to work with, you know, sweating copper pipes together on a daily basis for a living, like... Props to and, you guys. And man. on I some could... very weird places as well. Yeah. Because yeah. sure. when you're in the in the shop, I mean, I mean, I used to to do that for phase change system for extreme okay. overclocking. But uh, when you have a shop, you have the space around. You can move the stuff in the, every direction. That's okay. You can look at it. It say, ah, oh, yeah, I can fix that. But yeah, if you're a plumber and you're under the think of some someone, that's not something you could do. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. No, that's crazy. Um, I have a tricky question though. How is uh, are you doing with the the dust to to clean up all the pipes? Because everything is fully open, everything is with all the pipes and so on. Um, does it take you a lot of time to clean up, or it's pretty uh, like a, a swoosh swoosh and that's it? Yeah, it's actually very easy. Um, you know, we we keep a pretty clean house anyway, and so that definitely helps out. But every so often, I'll just take a 
thing of canned air and just blow the whole thing away and you know it, it's good you know i don't let it i have very little build up on it you know um i'm looking at the fans and the radiators right now and those i haven't actually even touched since i built the thing and i don't see any dust on them at all so <laughs> No, it's good. Right. That's good. That's it's, good. It's yeah. definitely for me. I think it's one of the most impressive desk builds uh, I've seen uh, in a long time. Because sometimes you see those desk builds and they are based on existing desks which are modded. But here, it's actually the the whole desk is actually being built. So it's uh, it's fairly impressive. Um, Thank you. you submitted that mod uh, to the World Series in 2018, so the Kuda Master Case Mod World Series. Uh, yes. How how did you rank in this one? Um, I. I believe I placed third overall on that one. Um, okay. I never saw an official thing at the end, but I was talking to one of the organizers on that after it was over, and she said that I was third. Okay. So, did they had a specific category for uh, desk mods or not really? They did. Uh, they well, they just did a scratch build mm -hmm. um, yeah. category, and then they did like existing case mod category. Right. So, so I entered into the scratch, scratch build, um, and. You know, for that one, I had already started building the desk, and I'd actually already purchased all the components for the desk before I even found out about the Case Mod World Series contest. And you know, after going through and reading the rules, one of the things that was required for that is you know you have to use components from um, Cooler Master. So uh, the only you know because I had already purchased all the components, the only component on mine that was from Cooler Master Armor the fans, and that was like the lowest end <laughs> thing. That would still make me eligible for could, it. Could have been a last minute addition as well, right? It's like, oh, I have it, this, it, uh, it really was. I have this yeah. RGB controller, does it apply? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. keyboard so mouse, like, well, you can always replace yeah. that quick, right? But I don't know if it yeah, counts I'm, for the modding contest. No, yeah, I, I was just like, eh, whatever, I'll, you know, I'm I'm building my desk. I want the, you know, no, nothing against uh, Cooler Master. I, their stuff is good, but, you know, I, for, in terms of like power supplies and stuff like that, you know, I wanted um, yeah, to the make sure I was already made a little bit on the, yeah. yeah, exactly. The, the thing that I really like about that desk, and I'm not a big fan of uh, desk mod or folds, because I don't think that's that's gonna last long. I mean, you're gonna use it for long because that's gonna be useful, but uh, you might be fed up with the with the look and so on. Uh, what I love to this one, it's it's not a rectangular one. No. It's not just a regular table that was converted into a modding PC or a modding desk. It is actually a different, uh, a different it's, shape, it's, it's and I really design. like that uh, that take on it. Actually, you don't have that many desks of this kind of shape. I mean, like I've never seen even design a desk like like that with the folded legs, and I've never seen something like that. Yeah, and that's I I get a lot of flack for that actually. Um, you know, going through you know Reddit posts and stuff that I've had put up. You know, for this, um, everybody's like, you know, it's a corner desk shaped as a rectangle. So, you know, why would you do that? You can't put it in a corner. And, you know, my answer to that is it was never designed to go into a corner. Yeah. You know, I designed it to be in the center of a room as, you know, the centerpiece for the office. And I just loved kind of the, you know, I'm really big into aviation and you know, stuff as well. So for me, it's kind of like the flying V look yeah. for the top, uh, which is you know, what I was going for. So, you know, anybody who's like, oh, you know, that's a horrible design, such a waste of space and whatnot. It's like, no, this is exactly the way I wanted it it's to perfect. be designed. <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah. Yes. You know, no, no, no desire to ever put it in a corner. All right. Um, so talking about competition. So you submitted this one to the builds.gg um, 10K contest. So for those of yeah. you that are listening or watching us right now, builds.gg, that's the website. Um, so there are .gg extension for your domain names. Mm -hmm. um, and so Builds is a community site where basically modders are converging right now. Uh, I think it's in part because they've, they, they have never been a place like this dedicated to modders. You do have a PC part picker that sort of have a, a you know, list your builds kind of thing and list and your then parts. And then post pictures, yes, but yes. not as modding focused. Yes, yes. So this one is a really modding focus. The idea is to also have people have their own page for their mod and have conversations about it and things like that. So they had the contest, uh, the 10K contest. And so you submitted this mod and according to the ranking, um, there hasn't been any official announcement yet, but you're first. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Um, what was your sort of like plan? Did you just saw the contest and you were like, okay, let's also submit it there, or you had had it already on the site 
uh, because you knew the no. site before and you were like, okay, well, we committed to it. No, honestly, um, I had actually never heard of the site uh, until um, somebody on Facebook, one of the Facebook Facebook groups, mm -hmm. uh, just commented on the picture that had been posted back when I initially built the desk and posted it to the groups. Um, they just resurrected an old thread and said, "Hey, have you you know seen the build.gg you know 10k contest? You know, have you submitted it for that?" And I was like, "No, I haven't even heard of it yet." So I you know, Googled it and, and found it. And I was like, ah, oh, this looks kind of cool. You know, what the heck, I'll, I'll, I'll put it together and, you know, put it online and, you know, we'll enter the contest and just as a, you know, see, let's see what happens type thing. And um, yeah, I ended up um, so far, you know, like you guys said, unofficially winning it, but I'll yeah. be. Well, uh, you're, I don't, you're, I, you're, yeah, you're yeah. pretty, pretty <laughs> ahead of the other guys. So the, the, the one after you is like 90, 90 votes behind or something. And then yeah. a good 300 something votes uh, for the third place. So yep. I mean, you're pretty. You seem pretty safe in the in the first position for now. But like yeah, with and, new hardware yeah. and new release date, wait for the official announcement. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, you know, I'm. I, I have a pretty good feeling about it. You know, they did go through yesterday or last night, and you know, one of the really cool things. Um, Kind of sidetracking it with the builds.gg mm -hmm. group is they have been doing an amazing job with going through and making sure that um people who are doing like fake votes or paying for votes and you mm -hmm. know that kind of stuff um of getting rid of those so uh, i don't know how exactly they're seeing all of it but you know they're they're able to track where the votes are coming from and how they're being submitted and stuff and if they are you know thinking that they're a fake vote of some kind then you know, yeah. it's they're not disqualifying the build; they're just removing those votes. So they went through last night after it was done, and um, you know, got rid of all the illegitimate votes. And then, um, you know, so the the rankings actually changed. A couple people moved around quite a bit after they mm -hmm. did that last night in the top five, and you know, I've, I've managed to to stay on top. And I actually don't think I lost any votes with it, so that's kind of cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. They 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 mentioned in one news they um they basically targeted like VPNs and people with which has had the same IPs or yep. votes that had the same IPs. Um, yep. Find out that there were VPNs behind those IPs, and then basically remove all those. Um, and they did it several times, yeah. So I think they, they definitely did a good job for that. There has been a bit of drama at the start with yeah. uh, the whole YouTuber that wanted to participate. Hey, you guys have too many followers. Uh, it's uncompetitive or whatever. Um, yeah, you know, as every contest, when there's a bit of money involved, everyone gets a bit uh, tight and touchy and yeah, whatever. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but uh, it's for cool. Sure. Like, uh, it's uh, it's very nice. And uh, if uh, the guys from Build.gg are watching the show or get to hear about the show, I'd love to have you guys on the show to, to talk about your website. So please uh, get back to us. Um, and actually you, if you win and you get to touch to them, I'd love to have you uh, tell them that we'd like to talk to them too. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. I'll, I'll reach out to them when I, when I get an email from them. Yeah, because definitely their, their website is pretty, pretty awesome. Um, it is. To close up the show, is there anything else you'd like to say or do you'd like to express why we are live? No, uh, I think the only thing is, you know, Thank you to everybody who participated in the contest and, you know, especially thank you to the people who voted for my build and, you know, for anybody who is thinking about entering into these contests. Um, even if you're brand new with modding and have never done it before, um, do it anyway, because, you know, I'm, I think a good example of somebody who is not a professional modder, you know, and I don't have sponsors behind it you know i paid for everything on this build myself um so you don't need to have big sponsors or any sponsors and you don't need to have a massive background in modding to still be able to win one of these things so um you know thank you to all the people who supported me and um you know kept me going through the build process especially as well and then a massive thank you to dave hughes with hughes manufacturing for letting me take over his shop for six months and <laughs> teaching me how to um how to do the welding and, and sweating the copper because there's no way I could have done this without him. Uh, where can people find you? Like any Twitter, if they want to get in touch with you and so on, like is that Twitter, is that uh, your Facebook page or anything? Yeah, um, you can just Facebook my name, uh, just Josh Lambeth. Um, and then, um, you know, the only Instagram and Twitter accounts I have are for my company, Bird's Eye Productions, LLC. Um, or if you just go to the builds.gg website, that's another great way to get a hold of me now. Um, and 
Yeah, just uh, look look my name up on that one, Josh Lambert. All right, awesome. Well, thank you very much for being in, being with us on the show. Thank um, you, guys. Before we close the whole show, there's a few more announcements we have to make. Yep. Go ahead. Uh, OMG PAX East panel on March 29th at 6 p.m. at the Condor Theater. That's next week. So basically, next week, there's the show will be the panel it's if we manage to get the internet there. Somewhere in Boston. So if we manage to get the internet there, we're going to do it there. If not, we're just going to find another way to, to do it. Uh, so yes, we will be doing uh, something next week mm -hmm. unless like, we have a very big issue with the internet, which is something we don't we know yet. Find a way. Uh, we can announce. So last week we announced that Pedro from, the, from PCMR, so actually the, the founder of uh, PC Master Race, will be uh, on the panel with us. And tonight we can announce the other panelists as well. Uh, we will have Kellen from Envious Mod that will be part of the, the panel uh, in nice. there. And we will have, and uh, we will be welcoming back Eric Ops uh, for the panel as well. He was actually with us at the PAX West panel. And he's someone that is very interested into the Mini ITX build. And we will have a Mini ITX and a full ATX build. So obviously, uh, I'm still not sure, I haven't decided yet if he's going to end up in the mini ITX one or the full ATX one. I, I just might... hope this time I would be paired with him. <laughs> yeah, actually, you were. last time yeah. I was against him. It was cool, but it would have been great to be on his team. So, yeah. so, so we will see how that turns out. Uh, once again, I want to, thanks, uh, to thank everyone from the sponsors that uh, makes this panel uh, possible. HyperX, EVGA, Corsair, and Streetcom. Uh, we will have a ton of giveaway. So if you're going to PAX East in Boston next week, Friday, 6 p.m. Condor Theater, be there. Nice like, free hardware. Like, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That being said, uh, that's one of the things. The uh, We still have a, a few discussions for the uh, meetup at TwitchCon. That's going to be next month. Mm -hmm. uh, but besides that, that's pretty, much, uh, that's pretty much it for this week. Excellent. Where can we find the replay, Tim? All right, so the replay will be available, of course, uh, in a few hours, just after the show on our YouTube channel. Uh, if you're already subscribed there, all good. If you're not subscribed to it now, if you watch it over there as a replay or if you're watching this right now, just give it a thumbs up and share it. Share it especially to the Facebook pages because Facebook doesn't share anymore. Um, also, make sure uh, to subscribe to um, the OMG podcast. If you like to listen to it as an audio form, you can find it on Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, everywhere that you can find podcasts. So do that as well. And make sure to tell your friends about it. Yeah, because obviously the more people is watching and the more people are listening, the more stuff we can do and the more people we can invite. So let's keep on going. See you next week.